Hello, this is Monkey Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new feature in Blender 2.78 called Bendy Bones. Now, Bendy Bones are exactly what they sound like. They're bones that allow you to bend easily. What it allows you to do is use and control and animate curved surfaces, such as uh, lips or eyebrows, for example, or a tail, etc., using a lot less bones than you normally would have to. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. It'll be a fairly short video, so... Um, you know, it's a pretty simple concept, but it's cool, it's powerful, and new, and I thought I'd show it to you. Now, I do assume you've got prior Blender animation experience. If you don't, don't worry, I got you covered. I will link an animation tutorial I did down below that will teach you everything you need to know here. Things like uh, creating an armature, uh, binding bones to a, a source mesh, animating over time, etc. Stuff we're all going to do today that I'm not going to explain. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in. Now, the cool thing about Bendy Bones is there's no need. It's built right into the basic course. You don't need to ex uh, manage it or... In uh, enable a plugin or anything like that. You can just go ahead and start using it. Just do make sure that you're using Blender 2.78 or later to have this functionality. Now, first things first, we're gonna actually need some kind of a surface to uh, animate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this, this shape out and scale you down a little bit. I'm just gonna create an organic shape. Just imagine that, for example, this was a tail. A very weird tail, but a tail nonetheless. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit more. And one more time. Yeah, right. so there is the shape that we're going to go ahead and animate. Now I'll just select everything and we'll subdivide that a couple times. All right, so that is our base shape. Now I'm going to do this last part just for myself because, well, just because I want this to be flat. So I'm just going to grab the back faces like so, and we will scale them Y0. Switch to the side view and GY, bring that out a bit. All right, so here is our shape. Nothing really special um, at all, but it is an organic shape that you might, for example, animate with bones. Now I'm gonna show you a traditional bone approach. So let's click right about there to set our pivot point. Right there. Let's make sure that we're good on the top. No, nope, we're not. And there. All right, so go ahead and add an armature, just like you would normal. So there's nothing new as of yet. Actually, I'm going to be doing a very traditional approach here uh, in general. So we're going to look at the new functionality in a minute. Let's bring you down a bit. All right, so rotate that guy. X is 90. Go to X-ray. All right, so that's exactly what we want. Now we just want to take this bone here and bring the tip out. All right, so, and then we'll just extrude that second guy out. So there's a very traditional approach to bone. And we look at my other views to make sure that we're... Uh, Looking good, looking good. All right, so we've got it set up right. Now I'm gonna go ahead here, grab my bone structure, parent it, and set automatic weights. So we're very normal so far. This is exactly how you would animate this guy. But what you'd have to do is if this was, for example, lips or eye, you would have to add a lot more uh, bones to get kind of the complexity you want. So for example, I can come in here now, and grab our bone structure. We can switch here into uh, pose mode, and you'll see the end result. Rotate that guy, and there you can see. So look at the kinking that we're getting immediately. So that's the downside. So if we want to get away from that, uh, we'd have to either do a lot of weight editing, or we would have to add another bone for that detail. And that's where things start to get a little yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this entire structure here. So uh, let me see, get back out to object mode. Object mode, grab both of you guys, and we'll duplicate. And G, uh, X. I just screwed things up. Right, let's undo that so I've only got one. Okay. So you two, shift duplicate, and we'll move you over. All right, so now we've got the two examples. So we've got our traditional approaches now over here. What we're gonna do over with this guy now is show you how the bendy bones approach works. And there's not a lot involved. First thing we've got to do is actually enable bendy bones. This is just so that the rendering style. So here's your traditional stick style bone. Come in here to your armature settings, and you can see your display. So we've got the um, octahedral is what we're using right now. What we want to do is switch our new clone over here over to using the B bones. So that's really the only difference. Now you can see we've got the stick-like approach instead of the uh, octahedral that we had before. All right, so that's step one. We still only have two bones, but now they're going to be displayed as bendy bones as opposed to the octahedral bones. So the next thing we need to do is actually configure the bendy bones, and that's done in the individual bones. So you can see we've got uh, bone 001 selected here. So we can go over here into edit mode, and we can select the other bones. So now we've got so bone 001 and bone. 
It's bone 001 that we're actually going to want to deal with at this point in time. And now that we've got it selected, you'll see we've got this new section here called bendy bones. And bendy bones is pretty much the heart of what we want to deal with. And what we can now do is add segments. So this is where it gets really important. So we're still only dealing with two bones, but we can add a bunch of uh, line segments to each bone. Think about bendy bones as sub splines that control each particular bone. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add four or five segments to that particular bone. So you can see exactly what just happened here. So now our bone is actually composed of bonelets, I guess you could say. Still one bone, but it looks like uh, up to five now. And immediately you'll see the results. So switching to Benny bones from uh, the traditional bone, and we're going back here, we'll, we'll make this guy just three. So as you can see, you can set each different bone differently. So now sit here, go back into pose mode. And if we rotate it, you see, we don't get that awful kink. Well, we got a kink elsewhere, but that's different reasons. But in our bend, it didn't give us the kink because we have these bones at our, um, these, the bending bones now bend and bend more smoothly than we were dealing with before. And that's essentially it. That is bending bones in a nutshell. The only thing that you're gonna look at now other than that is you wanna have a little bit more control over that bone and how that bone works. And ultimately the bending bone is really just, think of it as a line or a spline that's um, kind of controlling the sub bones themselves. So we can do a couple things here. We can change, their, uh, it's a two dimensional spline again, so we can modify it on the X and Y axis. So for this guy, for example, if I wanted to change the curve, I can change it that way. So we can just have a little bit more control over how those, um, the bone, I'm gonna call them bonelets, but the bonelets inside of the bendy bone um, actually work. So you've got a lot more detail on the individual bones that you can go with. Uh, same, we can also scale the influence of said bone on both ends, like so. Uh, we can ease in, it's basically the, the degree of our curve, and ease out, like so. And we can roll, which is basically to twist, like so. And that's kind of it, that is how they work. And as you can see, so now, again, we're only dealing with two bones, but we've got so much more control over how they bend. So this is absolutely ideal for dealing with, as I said earlier, things like eyebrows or um, a tail or uh, lips, etc. And now if you think to yourself, ooh, I can really use this in my game. Well, no, that's where the downside comes in. At the end of the day, if I go ahead and I export this guy as FBX, it's still going to behave exactly like this. So this spline-like bending behavior inside is really only gonna work inside of Blender. So unless a game engine explicitly supports it, um, this is gonna be lost on export. So this is only gonna be really useful inside of Blender itself. Now it's a shame there's not an ability uh, as of yet to say, all right, I'm gonna work and model this way, but when I export, please just make each one of these, I'm gonna get, go with the term bonelets into an individual bone chain. Um, you know, it's gonna defeat some of the complexity reduction when you know, we'd be back to having to deal with an entire bone um, sequence again, uh, but it would allow you to export to game engines because a lot of times when you deal out to the game engine, you don't really care that much what your armature is like anymore. More. You want to have some named bones, etc. But if there's a couple more, you're not going to care too much. It's when you're posing and dealing with these curved surfaces that having these bones in there that are just there to bend becomes a pain in the ass. That's where Benny Bones really shines, is it does keep the complexity down. You're really, again, you're only dealing with these one bone, two bone, just like before, one bone, two bone. But your complexity is massively reduced for dealing with curved surfaces. So that is it. That is bendy bones that basically consist of a number of segments. And the nice thing is actually, so if I come back to this guy that we've got, if I need more detail, I can add more segments. If I need less, I can take it away. And the settings that we have before are preserved. So you can see the actually rather perverted looking results of this interaction immediately. So as you need to add or remove detail. So like I said, we've got this weird glitch going on up here, this, that. So if I came down here, I imagine if I add a couple of segments, we'll actually get rid of that. There, there you go. So you've got the ability to change things on the fly and manipulate, but still it's only technically two bones. But as I said just a second ago, the biggest downside here is that when you export it out, all of this nice bendy twisty functionality that we've been adding goes away. So uh, at the FBX export format, for example, does not have a slightest idea what a bendy bone is. Now, hopefully going forward, we start to see this functionality incorporated into other engines or um, they do implement some kind of an export so that this can be exported in a way that a game engine will understand. But uh, I tested it a couple of times and every time I did it, I basically just got a dumb old fashioned standard and you know with all the artifacts that would result from it 
kinking standard style bones. So that part's a little unfortunate, but if you're doing your work directly in Blender, you're gonna be rendering in Blender. This is a great new tool and one that you should definitely be aware of. All right, that's it for today. So that was Bendy Bones added in Blender 2.78. Hope you found that informative. Uh, if you did, please do click like. Uh, we do this kind of stuff all the time on the channel. So if you're interested in you know game dev tools, art tools, programming tools, tutorials, reviews, etc., we got you covered here. So that was it for now. See you all later. Goodbye.